Hello everyone and welcome to the November 2017 prototype release of Citybound. This month was kinda rough for me and I had to spend a lot of time on fixing the memory leak on Windows and actually all platforms which made the game crash. So because of that the release is a couple days light and there was no patrons calling, both of which are a shame. But I focused hard and worked quite intensely to get the most important things done and I would say I managed. The topic this time was to get the rural town scenario going. So. Let me show you what I have. We start by using a new village generation feature where I press R to generate this rural road network which you can see here. Let me build that. And um, let's speed up time until some buildings spawn. There they are. You can see the road network is a little random, a little like a fractal. And let's just first look at a family building here. You can see not really much change. We have money and groceries and the individual needs of the members. But let's try to find a grocery store. Like, uh, see. Let's try to find a grocery store like this one here. And you can see that here's now a host of new resources. And if you look at these numbers changing, you can see that the grocery store actually kind of converts all of these here into groceries. And also that the grocery store itself now has a retail worker, which is apparently on his way to get baked goods. So what does that mean? That means that here we actually have the first resource chain in the game, where the grocery shop offers groceries, but needs all of these other resources to produce groceries. Now this is of course a little simplified that the grocery store converts these resources, but that's just to keep, see, to keep things simple for now and to have one source and kind of package of groceries for families. So let's try to find the producers of some of these resources here. We can check some of these fields. For example, here we have a cow farm which produces meat and uses up grain. See what else we have here. We actually have a grain farm which just slowly produces grain. Um, let's check maybe we can find one of the new buildings. I think I saw some on the other side or here for example this with the gray roof is a mill which converts grain into flour and somewhere if we're lucky we should be able to find a bakery. I think I saw one here earlier. These are quite rare. But I think you start to get the idea here, this is a bakery. We see it takes flour and dairy goods and converts them into baked goods. We can even look at the offers that this bakery has and we see that, well obviously it offers baked goods. Right now it only has one customer of up to 30 and it has three job offers, all of which are used, but only one of the people is working there right now. This already gives you a pretty nice overview of the new capabilities of the economic engine and uh, I think I showed you almost all of the new businesses and one important realization that I had that made all of this possible is that businesses and families really work pretty much the same in the sense that they're just households which need certain resources and which offer other kinds of resources and in order to get the resources which they need they go out with a car trip and fetch it from a producer of that resource and they manage kind of customer, supplier relationships or in the case of families, employee-employer relationships. You can see that this grocery shop for example right now has a car somewhere which is getting flour because that's one of the things that the supermarket needs in order to offer groceries. This system of uh, taking the basic ingredient of a household and making it generic and then having all of the different families and businesses just be configurations of this what I call a household core is so flexible that it even allowed me to add something else which you can see here this kind of rom shape at the end of this long road is something that represents a neighboring town or the neighboring environment. These will spawn like buildings but only at the end of very long roads like this one here we make this window a little smaller. And uh, they contain a couple families which might interact with local businesses as well as this neighboring town node here which itself can produce 
all kinds of different resources as if there were like bakeries or fields in the other town. And it also has workers that can go into your town to get resources which they need or which could even work in your town. So I didn't even need to implement neighboring towns or trade with the outside world as a separate feature. It just fits very naturally into this generic household idea that I created. So yeah, this is a rough overview of the things that I managed to do for the economy. I actually wanted to give a first shot at balancing the economy and how much money everyone makes. So let me show you how I did that. I used the spreadsheet math to do most of that. Here in Turkey, you can see the kind of basic assumptions like how much money someone earns per hour, how many work hours per day per employee you have, how many working family members you have. And for example, how many units of groceries a family uses, in this case nine, because it's like every family has three members and it's assumed that they have three meals a day. And then from there, all the numbers in gray are kind of inferred from the other parameters. Down here, I have a kind of list of recipes for how much meat you need in one unit of groceries, for example. And here you can see that also meat requires some grains because you need to feed the animals. Same for dairy goods. Baked goods, actually require, baked goods actually require both dairy goods and flour. And calculating that, inventing some work hours that are needed to produce each one of these units of these resources plus some margin, you end up with a price for all of these resources. And that gives you an idea, for example, how much money a family has to spend, how much they earn, and how much yeah, all these different kinds of businesses make. The only real problem right here, except everything being very heavy guesswork and probably not very realistic yet, is that because this is such a small subsection of all resources that exist in a real economy, too few jobs are created per family, uh, which means that actually most people end up unemployed right now. I'm trying to fix this in the game by making the, let me show you that, making the neighboring town offer a lot of jobs offer. So if we look here, here uh, it actually offers 300 jobs and 194 of them are used. But still, this can't offset the fact that we're only looking at a very small part of a real economy. But that's something that I can slowly extend over time while making sure that it's well balanced. And I only had one day to do this balancing and to put the numbers in the game and hope that it kind of works. And uh, some things don't work quite yet. But overall, I'm quite happy about how much control I have over this. It's actually much more than I thought I would have. And I'm really looking forward to extend the economy using this model and then later having something more dynamic where you can actually have changing prices based on offer and demand. So to summarize, I didn't end up adding all the resources and businesses that I wanted just yet. But uh, I found some really nice solutions to implement the mechanisms to support a complex economy, including things like resource change and neighboring towns, like we see here. Yeah, I have a simple version of the interaction with the neighboring surroundings of the city. And I managed to fix the memory leaks and while I was at it also tried to fix some of the most annoying road bugs. Finally, one small detail, I changed the kind of time scaling. You can see that time passes a lot slower, where if you run it at 1x speed, one in-game day actually takes around one hour, and I'm like slowly warming up to the idea of making time speed up a core gameplay element. And uh, just to, to kind of fix the time warp issues that traffic is already experiencing in this village environment. But uh, at the time scales that I'm using now, Everything is working quite smoothly. I don't get too much traffic hold up. People don't spend hugely unrealistic amounts of time to get from A to B. And I'm quite happy with that. And we will see how that evolves with the economy becoming more and more complicated. So uh, next month I will actually switch topics and work on implementing building plots and zoning. So stay tuned for any further announcements and hopefully there will be live streams again this month. I hope you enjoyed the prototype, the link will be in the description. Let me know how it is and I hope to see you all soon. Take care everyone and bye bye.